Ladies as well as gentlemen, or I should say good morning for me, it's time for another Mystery Arena all-in-one run. Basically, I just want one fucking successful arena so I can go to bed and Shaman, well, if he doesn't do it for us, then I'm going to be up for a long, long time. Here we have a really, really good epic pick. I've had a similar pick before, and what ended up being the correct decision was to take the big thing. Last time it was like Doomhammer, Sea Giant, and Earth Elemental, and the Earth Elemental was great. I will stand by that pick again. Here, Sea Giant, not quite as good as Earth Elemental, but still very good. I'd rather take this than the big game Hunter, which will definitely be good in some games, but may not be good in others, whereas Sea Giant, you're pretty much always happy to have. We'll just take the most quality card here, which is the Flesh Eating Ghoul. And the Stormforged Axe is awesome. Here, uh, the Dark Scale Healer is a really good 5 drop. I like it a lot, but I'm going to take the Unbound Elemental because uh, I like 2 fours for 3 mana. I like those a lot. I think they're really great. Shamans have a ton of removal for 3 mana, or excuse me, to deal 3 damage. So I don't need to take this Quasi Removal in the form of the Wolf Rider, who also dies to mages. We'll take the Wind Fury Harpy here. Uh, here we'll just take the best card again, which is the Panda. And then the Senjin. Alright, I think the Stampeding Kodo is nice. I think it's the best of those. Uh, so Lightning Bolt or Rockbiter Weapon? Lightning Bolt has a couple of advantages. Number one, it bypasses Taunt. Number two, it buffs your Unbun Elemental. Number three, it gets buffed by Spell Damage. But I do prefer the Rockbiter Weapon in a total vacuum. Like, if I already have a Rockbiter Weapon, I might take Lightning Bolt for variety. But in a vacuum, I'd rather have the Rockbiter because... It lacks the overload, so in the early game is when the overload matters the most. When it has the biggest odds of screwing up your uh, uh, your subsequent turn. And so having the Rockbiter weapon for the kill is nice. Okay, here I think the only good card is the Cobra. Well, the Sentry Protector is playable, but the Cobra I think is much stronger. Hmm. Mediocre pack here. We'll go ahead and grab a little bit of card draw in the form of the Loot Hoarder. This is a terrible pack. We'll take the Panther. I don't like it. The other cards absolutely suck. And here we have two really good cards. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Drake. This is a really nice side-by-side -side comparison. So, the Drake draws a card right away, and it's got an extra effect, the spell damage. The Auctioneer only draws a card right away if you happen to already have a spell in your hand. Now, Shamans do have a lot of cheap spells. Lightning Bolt, Rockbiter, Weapon, Fork, Lightning. I only see one at the moment. Actually, that's the only spell I have at the moment. So, we'll just make sure we get the guaranteed card draw in case this draft goes bad. The Dread Corsair is the only taunt, I think, other than the Senjin Shieldmaster that I have. It could be two mana if I get it with the Stormforged Axe, and that's enough of a draw for me to avoid taking these cards. So we'll grab them here. Ah, Hex. Great! That's nice. Garbage, garbage, Flame Tongue Totem! Perfect. And we can take a good four drop or the best two drop. What do we have for two drops? Loot Hoarder, Flame Tongue, Stormforge? Quite a fair bit. Four drops? Also a fair bit. Hmm, we'll take the Dwarf. It works nicely with the Totems. Scarlet Crusader has failed me on more than one occasion. We'll take a Flesh Eating Ghoul in her stead. And Light... I'm an Elemental. I don't like that I'm spiking three mana here, but what are you going to do? Lightning Storm is great. It's Shaman's only global removal, so it's a rare, and that makes it rare to get in the arena. And we got it here, which is nice. That's another Senjin. That's another grab. Fire Elemental! Hey, I thought we were missing something. That's nice to have. Forked Lightning is good removal. We'll grab that up. Hmm, I don't like this guy at all, so we'll take this even though we have a lot of three mana cards. I will take this. Silence is something we don't have yet, and it's important to get some silence. Do I take another one of these for more taunt? Well, it's better than this stuff. Although it's nice to have some spell damage, I suppose, for... Well, for what? For Earthshock? Kinda, not really. For Forked Lightning and for Lightning Storm. Yeah, we'll do this for the spell damage. Oh god, this is just terrible trash. Um, take a Flame Tongue Totem. Oh god. Too many Flame Tongue Totems is a bad thing. We'll take Voodoo Doctor here. I don't want to have too many Flame Tongue Totems. Ah, Chill and Yeti. Perfect. And god, I could not get any late game in this in this draft. I just didn't ever see any. At all, actually. All I, what did I pass on that was late game? I don't think I saw anything that was late game at all, did I? Did I? I thought there was like a spiteful smith, but kind of. Uh, I've seen people use this. It's never impressed me. We'll just take a pint size summoner. Well, that wasn't the best shaman deck, but it's going to have to do because we need to go to bed. It's going to be like 6.30 a.m. if this is a good run. If this is a bad run, I'm going to have to stay up more. 
Maybe I'll have to break. You know what? Maybe if I just maybe if I just like don't win with Shaman, I'll just give up Hearthstone. I think I've had like six or seven runs in a row that failed after having four in a row that went to nine wins. Uh, that's a bit that's a bit sad. Ah, we'll keep the three drop in case the mulligan is worse. Ah, hey, we got a one drop. Well, so here's the thing about this one drop: it will die to the Paladin's recruit. So I'm not super jazzed about playing it, but I'm still gonna play it. There's a chance I'll get a Taunt Totem. There's a chance I'll rather play something else. There's a chance he has his own one drop. So I think it's worth putting it out there. Alkaiser 24, Paladin. And he's gonna make a reinforcement with the coin, no less. So I got him to use the coin in exchange for this Voodoo Doctor. Well, let's see how lucky I get. The answer is kinda lucky. So this is nice, it'll get to kill off his recruits that he, that he plays on subsequent turns. So he does get to kill me with the recruit, but the recruit did cost him a coin, so I figure that's a fair trade. Alright, we're gonna get to put on the pressure here now. Uh, I get to play Flesh Eating Ghoul, trade my totem for his recruit. This is a 4-3 for 3 mana, which is... Well, that's, that's, that's in my opinion what a vanilla 3 mana card should be, but it's a 4-3 that will grow bigger, hopefully. Ah, well, there's a Wolf Rider being pretty good for the Paladin. So he trades off. And... Passes the turn. Come on, buddy. You can click that end turn button. There you go, I believe in you. You have a Chillwind Yeti, which is nice. Very difficult for Paladins to deal with. Truce of a Champion doesn't cut it. Hammer of Wrath doesn't cut it. Consecration doesn't cut it. He needs a Humility effect here. I don't have any Silence except for Earthshock. So I could, I guess, Earthshock the Chillwind Yeti to bring it back up to 4 damage in, in, in a dire circumstance, I suppose. Senjin. Well, that's a decent answer. It actually technically will trade against the Yeti, left to its own devices. I have no intentions of leaving it to its own devices, however. I wouldn't I intend for it to die. So this is a mighty 4-2. Consecration will kill it, so will Hammer of Wrath, but that'll be his whole turn. And then we have the Dark Iron Dwarf still on the board. Which is why that's a good card. Ah, that's a very good answer, though. Ah, crap. Well, here I'm going to go ahead and play this overpriced Taunter. Let's protect my 4-4. It's much more valuable. I could, of course, have flipped the totem first and then maybe played a Panther instead, but whatever. This is fine. Either way, either this or the Panther was going to trade for this thing anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. I guess if I had flipped the totem first, seen the taunt, played the panther, and he kills the taunt, this guy still sticks around on the board, mm. and then I could fork lightning and kill it. Ah, yeah, that was a bit of a misplay. I'll have to pay for that. I should have flipped the totem first before choosing to play the Dread Corsair, because if this were a taunt, which it was, I should have played the panther. The problem with the panther is it dies to consecration, so I don't know, maybe, maybe that wasn't a good play anyway. Well, that all just made Forked Lightning a lot less impressive than it used to be. He will make the smart move and trade, as he should. Hmm, Stormforge and Axe doesn't really do it for me here. We'll play the Windfree Harpy. This is putting some intense pressure onto the board here. This is 8 damage being threatened. And I've got some removal. I've got a Hex for anything big. I've got a Stormforged Axe for anything small. Well, smaller than this Golem, of course. He really needs a Hammer of Wrath to finish this Dwarf off. That would help him a lot. Or his own Dwarf. Actually, a Dark Iron Dwarf frame would be great. He could play the Harvest Golem, break the Totem. Dark Iron Dwarf, buff the Imp. Use the Imp to kill the Dwarf. And then at the end of the day, he's got the Golem and the Dwarf versus my Carpy. What I'd probably do then is actually, honestly, just to hex this thing. I, I'd kill the dwarf, then I'd hex this thing, and then I'd kill it. Or, well, the other way around would also work just fine. And then play the panther out. So all that is if he had a dark iron dwarf. He's thinking a lot, so he must have 
more than one thing that he could do here. I don't think he'd be thinking this hard if he had nothing. He's got the Consecration. Well, that is also a way to kill the Dwarf. I'll kill my Totem, then the Imp will finish the Dwarf off. There's no 4-4 four, four body on the ground here, though. And that Golem looks kind of silly against the Wind Fury Happy. Ah, so we're going to silence the Wind Fury Happy. I see. Hmm. Well, now is when Fork Lightning looks awfully good. I'm going to do it. So first, I'm going to play the Unbound Elemental. Then I'm going to play Fork Lightning. Then I'm going to play this. Let's just buff this up some more. Okay, Totem. Swing. Oh, it's going to get to healed up. Great. And we're getting to the, to the end game. It's not super likely he's going to play three creatures that all have two toughness. So we'll just take a pot shot at him here as well. Hopefully he plays one big thing. I can hex it, whack it with my Stormforged Axe, and then swing for eight damage. That is the hope. If he plays a bunch of little things, it'll be a little bit tricky for me to deal with because I have not drawn Lightning Storm yet. And I may never. We'll see. Let me think. Hmm. He's thinking a lot. Suggests he doesn't have anything great. It suggests he's sifting through his bad options. Uh, well, that's a pretty good one. I've got a huge I don't know why he thought so much about that. It seems like a pretty good move to me. But I guess the Wind Fury Harpy does live. So we're gonna get to kill this this dude. Play that. Consecration would really suck here. But he's already played one, and he clearly would have played the other one if he had another one. Instead of using the Stormpike Commando. So hopefully he doesn't have any more of those. But if he does, he'll probably win the game, because I haven't dealt enough damage to him to race him out. If he doesn't, I could very well be in really good shape, because I can still hex any taunt he might play. Finish off the frog with the axe and swing for eight. Okay. Well, there's no Consecration, which is good news for me. This is eight, ten... 13 damage. Ah, that's just... Oh, 14 with that. I don't even need that. But just in case, I messed up my arithmetic. Go for the kill here. I think there was enough with the Searing Totem. The Flame Tongue sealed the deal. Alright, there's Alkaiser 24. He goes down pretty solidly. A second Consecration would have won it for him. But, you know, expecting to get two of any particular common and in the draft and drawing them both is a bit of a tall order. So I'll call that a success for this deck. Again, it's not the best deck that I've drafted as Shaman, but it, I hope, is good enough because I want to go to bed. I, I could go to bed. I mean, there's no one, no one's making me, but I've sort of kind of committed myself here. I will not sleep until I've got a good arena. How many arenas have I failed in a row? I mean, there were like two or three that went up to six, and a couple went up to five, so it's not like I'm being an abject failure, but... Oh, I think it's like six. So I've, I went nine wins four times, and then like six just totally failed. Okay, this is a decent hand. We're going to get to coin out this on turn three, buff it on, or two, buff it on turn three if it lives. And we have some removal here in case we need it. So this is this is where it's good to be second, because if you were first with, with this curve, it would kind of suck a little bit. He's got mind vision. Well, he's getting a good card no matter what, except for the coin, as long as he... As long as he gets the coin, I'm happy, but if you got anything other than the coin, uh, I'm less happy. All these, all these are solid cards. Slim the Priest. Do you need a blessing? I guess you could say he had slim pickings. No, no, never mind. Okay, um... How do I kill this? I could ignore it. I could, yeah, I could just ignore it. What if he got a Shattered Sun Cleric off of me? Still not good enough to take out an Unbound Elemental. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and stick to the plan. I could have killed it with Earth Chalk, I could have killed it with Rockbiter Weapon, I value putting a creature on the board. He could, of course, like, play Power Word Shield, or something. He stole my Unbound Elemental. Well, for him it's just a 2-4, which is nice. It's never gonna be any... well, it's a 2-5, I guess. It's never gonna get any better than that for him. Hmm. 
We must cleanse the Sunwell. This is important. Because after I kill that, I want this to be at three health. That way it doesn't divert away to his unbound elemental. So far this looks like a pretty good start. Light spawn is a good card. I thankfully did not use Earth Shock, so I can silence it. I think I think I gotta do that. That seems really good. So the question is what to do next. Um, one option is just to put a, put a rock biter weapon on this guy, or actually on my Shattered Sinclair because I value it a bit less, and then just kill his unbound elemental. Another option is just to ignore it and swing for six and play a flesh and ghoul. Uh, I kind of want to kill this creature though, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I didn't want to attack with both of them because then they'd both be at one health, and then that's bad because then they both died a Holy Nova. When I play Priest, I don't see any Holy Novas in my draft, but I'm not going to count on other Priests to be quite so, you know, manly. Okay. Hmm well, the Healing Totem is a good flip. It. it doesn't actually make a technical difference because this is this still dies to Holy Nova, and um, this was never this still dies to Shadow Word Pain. But if it survives for another turn, this will actually start to survive Holy Nova. Are you freaking kidding me? God damn it! Ah, uh, well that sucks. Luckily, none of my other stuff that I'm playing here anytime soon is going to be at uh, two health, which is good. But I would have liked to get that myself. Thanks. Go ahead and play the Flesh Eating Ghoul, and make a totem. And... Um, I don't want to attack this unless I'm going to kill it in one swoop. Otherwise, there's really no point in attacking it. So if I had, say, a Stormforge Axe, which would buff this for Overload, then I could have killed it. And then I would have done so. Well, I've got decent cards here. A very impactful three drop, single target removal, and then some, some nice late game ish stuff. That's a pretty good card as well for him. It uh, really kind of fills the board. Puts a lot of power out there, which is a bit scary. Fire Elemental. Hey, I thought that was. I thought I had one of those. We'll kill that. That'll grow the flesh eating ghoul. And I'm going to cash it in against this 4 4. Seems fine. Heal up. Coming up on mind control territory. It's nice against a priest if you haven't had to use your hex. This is the only one I have. It's nice to be able to deal with threats in other ways because um, when you get mind controlled, it's nice to just be able to hex it off and then keep keep on going with your life. Hmm, spell damage. That's a bit suspicious. I'm going to use up the axe to kill my healing totem, which I can't blame him for. So. Interesting. I think we'll do this. So that the Kodo will kill that. Oh, Jesus. I should have attacked this cult master first. Well, whatever. We'll let him have the cards. Uh, yeah, I probably should have killed this cult master. I mean, this guy technically would have lived. It would have been at one health. And then I should have killed the other stuff. Oops. Well, we'll see what he got with his cards. A knife juggler is one of the things. And it masters another. Oh, he's going to get to fling some knives with that. He's going to heal himself up. He's going to get to kill my Kodo with the cult master if he wishes. He is, indeed. It's probably a good idea. It's actually kind of unfortunate the knife hit this. Because otherwise I could have panted this back and on it again. So the knife flings again. That's going to be irrelevant. I'll just get heal on my turn. Flame Chunk Totem. Can I win here? We've got 9 plus 4 is 13 damage. Not quite. I'm going to put it here, though. This allows me to kill off the Knife Juggler, which is a dangerous threat. We'll play this because it's very, very threatening. We're gonna get him down to six. This with a flame tongue totem is just silly. This is 12 damage all by itself. So mind control does not save him. No matter what he mind controls, the rest of my stuff kills him. So mind control doesn't save him. 
by Drake. Doesn't save him unless it's backed up by a defender of Argus. Alright, looks like he was going to lose. Even defender of Argus wouldn't have saved him. I could have hexed one of the things. Well, it, it, would, have been, it would have been a close call. I could have hexed one, killed the other, and then... Yeah, it would have been fine. So anyway, let's just go ahead and kill him. And GG. Slim the Priest. I guess he had slim pickings. Oh, okay, okay. So... Those were two pretty good wins. I'm happy with that, given that the deck isn't that good in my opinion. However, I did draw a lot of my key cards. I got the Fire Elemental. That was obviously great. got the Hex, which I didn't need, but it was nice to have. The Flame Chunk Totem was good. I got my Endgame with the Wind Fury Harpy. There's not like a superly large amount of Endgame in this deck, as you can see from the curve. Bohemond, the Mage. All right. Well, I'm second. And... I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep that. That's fine. So here's the game plan. I'm gonna coin out a totem, and any good player will know that if your opponent, shaman opponent, coins out a totem, it means he's got a flame tongue totem. He's planning to play after it. Of course, if my opponent has a mana worm, I will not do that. Use of sergeant. Hmm. Well, I'm still not gonna coin it out because then it'll just die. So that's sort of pointless. We'll just pass the turn then. Oh my god, I'm. My last arena run. Do you need a God damn it. My opponent just did all this, like, retarded shit with, like, stupid aggressive decks. Oh my god. Are you goddamn kidding me? <sighs> well, if I draw into Lightning Storm, I'll just win the game. And if I don't, I'll just lose the game. So that's kind of how this is going to go. Let's flip a totem. See what we get. Healing is not good. So I had a 50 50 flip. The taunt was good because my opponent has to attack into it. The 1 1 is good because it can kill off one of his creatures. But the healing and the spell damage really did nothing for me there. So, I guess he's still probably going to attack it. He really should. I haven't given away that I have a flame song. Oh my god. This game is so dumb. <sighs> lightning Storm will win me the game at any time. Just, I just straight up win the game if I get Lightning Storm. Um, but this is starting to be a little bit problematic. Okay, well, we have to... Flame Tongue Totem? Let's flip a regular Totem, see what we get. Spell damage. So I can actually deal 2 damage something? It's irrelevant, though. We're gonna go ahead and kill the Young Priestess, because she's buffing stuff. This Flame... Flesh Eating Ghoul is getting big. But again, if I get Lightning, it's pretty much the same story. If I get if I get a Lightning Storm, I win. Otherwise, I lose. He's always gonna kill the Totem to, to stop me from being able to use Flame Tongue shenanigans. Luckily, she didn't have a follow-up play, it seems, so that's good. We have to do this move. I'm going to make a Kodo to kill off one of her creatures. So now the Flesh and is really big, so she can get me down to 6 health, whereupon a Fireball will kill me. <sighs> wow, I, this didn't used to happen, but lately I just keep getting these bullshit games with uh, the... <laughs> The opponent just having this ridiculous nonsense and me not having what I need. Alright, that's... I'm not gonna give a well played for that. On to the next game! On to the next game. I mean, if you... I guess maybe I'm wrong. It's possible that I'm wrong. It's possible it's a viable strategy to, like, draft abusive sergeants and young priestess. But all that needs to happen for you to lose horribly is for them to be in the middle of your deck. And then, like, if you have, like, the flesh-eating ghoul and you're two polymorphs in your opening hand, it's just gonna suck. So, I... What I'm saying now is, it's an anomaly that it has happened to me this many times that someone actually pulled off that aggressive start. I think it's quite likely that some of the people I've steamrolled drafted such decks, and I just crushed them, and I never knew what they were trying to do. And then, like, you know, the world never knew that that's what they were doing. And the people who are beating me like that could very well have been those same people. Uh, who just happened to get good draws. So I don't think they're doing well in the arena with that crap, but it is causing me to lose some games due to bad luck, and that's how it goes. So uh, here I kept the Fork Lightning, of course. The only thing I could have done differently against that mage is mulligan my hand, because it was a bit of a slow hand, but if I guess if it becomes more prevalent for people to play with stupid garbage like that, I will uh, start mulliganing more aggressively. All right, here's a Knife Juggler. It's nice to see, to some extent, because the Loot Hoarder is pretty nice. So, of course, he'll get to get a creature out and have a 50-50 chance of killing a Loot Hoarder, but then um, I'll draw a card and then Fork Lightning will get the kill. 
So either way, it's it's a win. Ah, Stormforge Dax actually really kind of messes up my plans because now Fork Lightning does not get the kill. Because there's no other creature on the board. <sighs> Fucking <sighs> this game. Okay. Well, the Voodoo Doctor doesn't really make much sense to play. Because it'll just die to the axe. I could flip for a spell damage totem. But if it's not spell damage, it just sucks. So I have to play the Flesh Ningle here. And hope that I can trade it in for this knife juggler. Oh, damn, it's a bit scary. Ah, oh, he got the good flip. Okay, but he got, he played another creature out, so now I can, in fact, go ahead and fork lightning. We're gonna play this. It's a waste of the battle cry, but I'm overloaded next turn. What I will do it this turn, and it survives against the axe. There's also a chance we'll play like a good card and Flame Tongue will be good for me. As it turns out, Flame Tongue is not very good for me. This, I don't need the Flame Tongue for it. Uh, we'll just hit this. And I'm actually gonna heal it up to make my opponent work for the kill. So if I, even if I had flipped the Healing Totem without healing it, it would have been at 2 health, so it still would have died. Now he, like, you know, needs to work to kill it. Brave leader. Well, that is work. He got to get the kill. This is a real back and forth game. So he's going to kill the Voodoo Doctor now. But now I get to play the Flame Tongue Totem and kill his Raid Leader. So, nope. Change of plans. We're going to play the Stampeding Kodo to the Raid Leader. Cast well played. I that was very polite of him. Alright, he's got a totem that's good. Means he's got nothing to do for six mana. Which is fine by me. He's gonna buff it. That's actually quite good for him, little as I know, because the flame tongue totem here, I was gonna get a free kill. Now I have to actually lose the totem in order to kill it. Oh! Ah, always draw cards first. Always draw cards first. That wouldn't have changed it, thankfully, but you should still always draw cards first. So our totems trade. I put my Azure Dragon on the wrong side. Oops. Uh, it should really be over here. Here's Lightning Storm that had I drawn it would have trivially won me the last game. And again, it's kind of on me because I didn't mulligan. So there's possible that this was like two or three cards down. And had it been, and had I mulliganed, I would have won easily. We'll see. We'll have to keep an eye on this situation with people playing those dumb decks. Because um, if they keep doing that, then I will have to start mulliganing more aggressively like that. Hmm. Okay. Well. Play a Flesh and Ghoul over here. This guy has done his duty. We'll trade that. And this Harvest Golem, so the thing is, if I leave it alone, it might be able to kill my Flesh Eating Ghoul, and I do kind of value that Ghoul. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll sacrifice 6 damage to kill it, and then we'll Earth Shock. If I happen to have some extra mana, we'll, we'll play this overpriced Taunter. Oh, I already, I already I just played it this turn, whoops. And we'll pass the turn. So we've got uh, some big threats. A Lightning Storm would be good for my opponent here. Really good, actually. Oh god. Oh god. Oof. Man, he flipped the spell damage totem. If he had had a lightning storm there, that would have been redank. Okay, well, uh, we'll just kill that. Totem. Um, yeah, we'll just swing by. If he had lightning storm, he would have clearly played it on the previous turn. So he doesn't have it. Just in case he top decks it, I'll keep the panther back, because everything here dies to Lightning Storm. This is a 50-50 chance to survive. Taunt, okay. Does he have a Lightning Storm now? If not, he's going to lose. Notice how important this is. There's some situations where, like, it's the only thing that you have that will save you. Storming champion, hmm. It's not really going to save him. 
Well, that's another victory for the flesh eating ghoul. My major opponent really beat me with the flesh eating ghoul because I was killing as I was his one drops. The flesh eating ghoul with its key three health was able to survive and grow to an abominable size. It's a good game. Dignity has been restored to the Papa Boris clan. It's a it's a clan. It's a group of people named Papa Boris, I guess. I don't know exactly what's going on. Oh man, that is the lowest my gold has been in a while. So I started with 1600. Because 900 from the uh, beta refund buy-in thing, and then like 700 for the uh, easy quests, roughly speaking. And I made it up to 3,000. I was cresting 3,000 at one point. And then I had a bad run, good run, and then now I had this really bad run. So we'll see if I can go to bed finally. Isamu the Rogue. That sounds like a familiar name. I don't know where that's from. <sighs> I guess I'll keep this hex. Normally I mulligan early hexes, but if people are going to keep doing bullshit, then I should keep the hex. Just to, you know, have removal for their creatures so I can win the game with my better cards. That's how it goes. Okay, well that's actually nice to see. So, now I have removal for one thing and a totem will pass the time if she plays nothing. Ah, she has the coin. Does she have the Defias? She has the device. Scrub. Yeah. <sighs> well, let's flip a totem first. See what we get. Before we commit to using Rock Rider Weapon against these dudes. Not super likely I'll be able to get uh, any kind of card advantage, but it's possible. I might, like, you know, top deck a Stormforged Axe or something. And then I'll deal with them that way. Hmm, this is also a decent thing to play. It holds up against both of them. Either one plus the dagger won't do it. She's going to need her roguish removal to take care of business here. We'll see if she has any. We must cleanse the sun well. Aha. So that thing still dies. Interesting choice to buff that one. If she could have buffed the other one, then it would have lived. Hmm, I wonder why she did that. Well, never know. Let's play this. This also holds up theoretically against her creatures, so we'll see what she has to help kill it now. Dark Iron Dwarf would be the best thing. It would probably win her the game, because it could buff the Shattered Sun Cleric and it would trade. And then she'd have a 2-2 two, two, and a 4-4. Four, four. That, well, that, it depends on what else she has. So that achieves the same effect. This body's not as, you know, scary. If she's just going to dagger up, I'd say it's not that big of a deal. Harvest Golem. Well, it's a pretty good card. Okay. Hmm. I think we're going to have a little bit of a building turn here. We're going to hex that. And uh, we'll play a Kobold Geomancer. Try to trade with her creatures. See if she has any backstabs for it or if she's actually going to take up the trade. She's fishing for cards. So this board is starting to get kind of unruly. Again, Lightning Storm will just win me the game. Pretty much. She still has a lot of cards in her hand. But it'll pretty much win. Stormforged Axe would also have let me win the game very easily. Because I could have killed all the stuff. Ah, uh, now I'm just going to get beat down. Rogues are good at burning. They're not... Oh, God, are you kidding me? God, Jesus. Rogues are good at burning. They're not as good as mages are at burning out the opponent. So I'm not quite as worried. One disadvantage of the Hex, of course, is that I cannot rock bite her weapon to kill her actual creatures. I don't want to kill the frog with the rock bite her weapon. That'd be silly. Here's what if this had been a lightning bolt, it actually would have been better. I could have killed off this ringleader and saved a lot of damage. Betrayal. Well, rogues do what they do. So she's whittling me down with little creatures. Another harvest gone. Fuck. Ah. No lightning storm for Boris. Do this, this. I still can't rock fight her weapon. 
Yeah, that, I mean, because this was a rock biter weapon and not a lightning bolt. Oh man, I took a lot of damage from this ringleader. So I'm down to 10 health, which is a bit scary against a rogue. Especially because I can only kill one of these creatures next turn. Unless, of course, I get lightning storm! Cough. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's over then. I can't. I used my one hex and... Oh, well, okay. So we have lightning storm. We actually got the lightning storm. We'll flip a totem first to make it so that this is guaranteed to die. If it's a spell damage totem, of course. We did not get it, so now this is a coin flip whether the Harvest Golem will die. And it didn't. We're going to do this. We're going to trade that. Kill this thing. Rock Rider weapon. Kill that thing. So the Rogue is still... I mean, the Rogue is still winning this game. She has more cards than me, especially because two of my cards are totems. But, and she can also burn me out, potentially. Although, 8 health is a little bit above the point where I'd be that scared of a rogue burning me out. I mean, she could with, like, an Assassin's Blade, but in general, it's not that easy. So there's a backstab. There's the dagger to finish off the totem. So the fact she's killing my creatures rather than me shows she doesn't have any burn here. Oh, Jesus! Scarlet Crusader is amazingly good. Like, insanely good. Because <sighs> it kills my tiger. Engaging TC yep. So, she take. got just enough of a push to be able to beat me here. Panda? <sighs> what is my... Well, let's tote him up. See what I get. 1-1. One, one. Hmm. Well, I have to, I have to do this, I think. Good panda. Play the totem. Damn. I needed her to have, like, no cards, and she had some cards. So, that was that. Oh, my God. I think every, like, every single... No, not every single one. I would say two-thirds of my losses in recent arenas have been due entirely to aggro. Ah, oh, it's too late. I'm gonna do entirely to aggro. Like, not just like aggressive, like, oh, it was a pretty aggressive deck, or like, oh, that person got a good, like, draw, but it was like crazy playing with bad one drop cards. Aggro. Is that a thing now? Is that a thing I have to start worrying about? Is that a thing I should do? I, no, ah, man, no. There's gonna, it's gonna have to be so, like a mountain of evidence that comes out that shows that that is actually viable before I actually, like, accept it as a thing to ever do because those one drops are so terrible if they're in the middle of your deck and you get them early in the game and if you, even if you take all the ones you see there's no guarantee you're actually gonna have enough in your opening hand and then your your deck is so inferior that you just lose but yeah both both losses here have been to you know those aggressive starts so like it had it been a quote-unquote fair game i would have i would have won easily but because it wasn't i lost well okay well mulligan the five drops here out of respect for this aggro that people are playing with Got our lightning storm, great. Now I'm sure this person's just gonna play a nice normal game of Hearthstone. Greetings, friend. Uh, greetings jerk. Greetings, friend. And that's it. Let's see how it goes. So, uh, man. You know what, I, I'm sorry folks, I'm going to bed after this. Uh, in case you thought like, oh, Boris is doing like a thing where he's like gonna play until he wins. Nope, and then, uh, and then you were thought like, oh, so like this is the last video in the series. So I guess he must have won this one. Nope! You do not know that. I am going to bet after this win or lose. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, I'm, just, I'm just going to bet after this win or lose. That's what I'm going to do. I am not going to play until I win. It is going to be 6 a.m. here. And it's it's nap time. All right, Fork Lightning seems fine. I can't play my Chillowind Yeti next turn. The alternative is to play the Cobra. Alright, I think I do want to play Shulman Yeti next turn, or coin out a Stampeding Kodo next turn, so we'll go ahead and put this Cobra out. Shamans have a billion and one ways of killing it, of course, but we'll give it a shot. That's all I can do, right? Try. Pass me that arc light ah, well, the Cobra gets to live, which is nice.
So, here's where we take a 50 50 shot. Put a coin for the Kodo. Hopefully, it kills that guy. Kill the Kodo. Well, that's actually unfortunate because it means the rifleman can now kill off this Cobra. So, the Cobra will no longer be a threat to any big creatures my opponent could play, which is sad. That could be a very big difference in this game. Ah, he had a Stormforge Dax for the Cobra anyway. Well, fair enough. We must cleanse the Sunwell. Hmm. Is he actually gonna go for my Kodo? No, he's gonna go for my face. Everybody's going for the face today. Well, if I got a spell damage totem, then Fork Lightning would be great. But if I didn't get a spell damage totem, it would sort of suck. So let's put the Yeti on the field. We'll uh, kill one of these things. And we're also gonna rock fighter weapon. Kill the other of them as well. And the axe can kill the Kodo, of course. But I feel like I'm doing alright here. With this chill wind yeti. This card is a real brain teaser. I, I don't understand what the purpose of that is. Whatever. Alright, so he I, I guess he got to draw it and play it. I suppose he saved some mana? But he paid three mana, so he still ended up paying five mana. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. He's gonna give that taunt. What are you doing? Okay, that's weird. So he just threw a card away for, for nothing, pretty much. This is one mana off from being played, which is sad. I could, of course, fork the lightning, but that seems a bit silly. Well, it's not that silly. I can actually fork lightning and then kill them both. Hmm. We'll do that. We'll play this. Play fork lightning. Well, slip a spell name. Slip a, slip a totem. Should always do that first, just for good habits. Healing. All right. So fork lightning. Do 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 do, and then we're gonna do that. That Ancestral Healing, uh, I think that was just a bad card used in a bad way, is my verdict on that. No thanks, Mr. Right. Polite Man. Sudoku. Maybe that's, maybe that's why he's playing with all kind of, like, puzzle cards. Ho! Oh, uh, okay. He's got the full seven mana here, let's see what he wants to do, make a totem. Good start. Oh, I'll have 7 minus 2 is 5 mana. He'd have to play 2 more creatures for this to be playable. Seems unlikely, especially because he's lightning bolting my Mount Elemental. What has he got next? A Fork Lightning? No. Well, in general, I'm not a big fan of um, attacking your opponent's creatures with spells aren't killing them. We must cleanse the so we'll do this. I guess I'll take it on his word that there was actually some kind of point to that for the future. And heal up. So I'm at 8 mana. This should be playable now. Dust Devil. Oh gosh. Well, it's a good thing we have Earthshock. I could even play Lightning Storm. It's worth considering. Hmm. No, let's save Lightning Storm. We'll do this. We'll do... Let me make sure I don't run out of room. Yeah, we can do this. Blood and I can't play any more creatures, so this, I need to play this thing now. Okay, that leaves me with one minute to Earthshock that thing. Trade the Shadow Sun Cleric. So I'm trading rather than damaging because in case of a lightning storm I want this to survive. And we'll pass the turn. So we have quite a lot of power on the field. Even assuming a hex on this, this is still 4-7 power. Ancestral Spirit. Ah, well that is a nuisance for sure. I could hex it, and now I'd only hex it if I'm actually gonna win the game. So let's see, let's imagine I hex it, and then flame tongue, and then play lightning storm. 
to kill it. And then play Flame Tongue Totem. What, how much damage do we have? We have 3, 7, 15, plus 4 is 19. Ah, no, I'm short. So we're going to go ahead and take the slower approach here. Ah, shoot. I have to lose the spell damage totem, don't I? We'll do this. We'll do this. And I could have dealt two extra damage to him, but I couldn't have killed him because of the taunt. Uh, and we'll make a totem. Faster. So all the fair games in this arena, I've won pretty handily. All the games with uh, people playing garbage chumpsicles, I have lost. Four wins. You do not know if I won this or not. I guess you could look at the, at the timestamp like a bastard, but some of those games are really quick because of the aggression. So you don't know, man. You don't know. You don't know what the, what the time. That timestamp might mean nothing. You don't know if this is a win or not. It's an entirely spoiler-free arena run mm, from Papa Boris. Now Shaman is my best class. That's why I was really hopeful going into this. I've only failed once with Shaman in ten runs. Oh, I've got like a crazy success rate with like an 8.1 average because like seven of those were nine win arenas. DX the great, we'll see just how great you are. Alright, well, we'll keep a three drop. We'll send that back, it's expensive, we'll keep this removal. Ah, uh, that's not so great, just yet. Hopefully this priest isn't doing the aggro thing and we can just fight a nice fair game. Of course, you know, uh, I do lose normal games too sometimes. It's not like I win every game that my opponent doesn't rush me down with possible we'll play a fair game and I will lose and then I'll go to bed very sad man because I've lost my love and feeling and Hearthstone doesn't like me anymore okay he's gonna coin something else well that's a really good answer to this unfortunately because this actually deals damage which is really really sad so do I play the Cobra or the Unmind Elemental? Well, I'm definitely going to attack him. Hmm. Two turns away from the Kodo. I guess we'll play this. Because after he attacks this, he'll be at two health, potentially. He might decide to heal it up. But if he doesn't, then I can fork Don't lightning. Oh no, that, this did not work out like I wanted. Oh jeez. Ah, Jesus Christ. Hmm. Well, let's see what I get. Does that help me? Not really. Let's go ahead and make a totem. Hopefully it's spell damage. Please. Nope, not a chance. Alright, we're gonna do this. We have to finish that thing off. I can't play Flame Tongue Totem, it'll just die. Fort Lightning is pointless. So we'll just pass the turn. This is not a great start, but I do have some big things here. So of course mind control could wreck, wreck my life, but that's not for another little while yet. It's going to heal it up. It's totally a waste of mana. He doesn't know that, of course, because of Stampeding Kodo. Ah, now Stampeding Kodo has two targets. Eh, still worth playing. And I killed the spell damage. Hard to say what was like more important to kill the spell damage or the just the, the, the more toughness. Fire elemental will probably chew on this next turn. Mind control still a ways off. Maybe the turn after that I can actually hit with the fire elemental. We'll see what he plays here. Hmm. Uh, I am not Hit master. Okay. Person. Fair enough. Shields up. Hmm, so you give him taunt. That's fine, I was gonna attack him anyway. I'll take it. I can actually play this thing. Which is really interesting. So I can make the flame tongue totem, then this would cost four. 
which works. We'll do that. And we'll do this. Right here. I wanted to kill off the Imp Master right away. Flame Tongue Totem is going to die. I guess that was the drawback of my plan. I could have made like a regular totem. But I wanted to kill off that Imp Master right away. Call Master. Hmm. Well, he can't kill the Flame Tongue and draw all the cards in the world. So he's going to pick one or the other. Fire Elemental is going to be good for this. Possibly Fork Lightning. We'll see. Depends on what he wants to do. He's either leaving my Flame Tongue alive or he's drawing cards. I mean, he could do kind of a little bit of both, but it's not super great that way. So he's going to kill off the Flame Tongue Totem, which is smart, because he should. And then he's going to hedge his bets and draw a card off of that. I guess? Okay. I'll, I'll deal with that. So does he have a play? I hope he heals himself. Power uh, That's actually amazingly good for him. Because it makes it survive Fire Elemental. Shit. Ah, by one. Mmm, boy. So now I have to kill this and give him another card in order to... Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sacrifice damage in order to keep my creature alive. We'll do this. We'll fire elemental first, and that way it dies at the same time as the imp. So it doesn't draw a card. The order was very important there. We still have a lot, and he's still a turn away from mind control. So that one turn away from mind control that he is is very important because it is a turn where I can hit him for a crap ton of damage. Unless he plays a really good card here, so we'll see. He can have like a pair of Shadow Word Deaths from all the cards that he's drawn. So I have the board advantage, but he has the massive, massive, massive card advantage. Well, it's not that massive. He's got, what is that, nine cards up there? Holy Nova? Okay. I'm not a bummer. All right. You can suck a dog. With your mad bombers. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this to block my creatures from being killed off by this mad bomber. And we're going to swing for 14 damage. Okay. So now he could spend his entire turn to mind control, but the problem is, is if he does that, this can't break through the taunt. So let's say he mind controls the 8-3. I'm hitting him for 6, 9, 10 damage. It's not a good place to be against a shaman. It's going to do it. Well, you do that. You suffer the consequences. I mean, he's a priest. He could heal up if I don't draw, like, the rock biter weapon or a lightning bolt to kill him or another flame tongue totem. He could heal back up and, and win, but I get to deal 10 damage to him and play more cards, and it doesn't matter because I got flame tongue totem. So, this is a good illustration of... Oh, my God. Well, it's a good thing I only needed one of the creatures to get buffed or else that uh, creature swapping bug would have really wrecked my day. It's a good illustration of how mind control is kind of a fine card. And, you know, the fact that it's getting nerfed to 10, it feels almost like they're just making priests worse by doing that, just, just, just for the sake of making them worse in a way that's easily visible, rather than, like, making a super needed change. Although I've seen people argue to the death that mind control is OP because it's card advantage and whatnot, but, I mean, he was playing a card down that whole game because that mind control wasn't something else. And then I knew exactly what would happen if he played mind control because it would be all of his mana and then it happens and I won the game yay mm. hmm warlock Andy Cord the warlock alright well since warlocks do tend to do the most rushing I'm gonna mulligan super aggressively here super aggressively so getting rid of this even though I would normally keep it because it's four mana and it might not matter by the time I'm already losing the game I hate this card, but it was in a bad pack. Now, this is actually a nice start against aggro because the Rockbiter weapon and the Stormforged Axe are removal. The Stormforged Axe in particular will kill a lot of Flame Imps. Now, um, it won't kill the Flame Imps if they're buffed by a Blood Imp, so for that reason, what I'm going to do is actually coin it out. Now, normally you never want to coin out Stormforged Axe because on your next turn then you can't even play a Totem. But here, it's really important to do that so that the Stormforged Axe will kill his Flame Imps before the Blood Imps can drop to the table. God, I hope this guy, like, has a bunch of shit creatures and I just crush him. That would be such a, such a vindication of my existence. Alright, there's another Chumper Nugget. Well, Loot Hoarder's a fair card. That's, that's fine. Just kill it. Note that Rockbiter weapon 
is a non-bow with Stormforged Axe, because they both have to, you both end up having to target the same thing, so be careful about that. So he had a 1-drop and a 2-drop. I killed them both with one card and the coin, so I'm off to a good start. He can, of course, draw cards to get around the card disadvantage, but uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to be playing, you know, cards that are good. And, well, I don't want to point at that when I say that. I'm going to be playing cards that are good. And, um, yeah, just going to kill him in the mid-game is the hope. Voidwalker. Hmm. Well, this is actually where it sucks to have the axe, because the Rockbiter weapon will kill it, but, like, I'm sort of wasting this axe's potential here. Um, the Panther is a nice way to attack the Voidwalker. So I'm actually going to play the Panther, just because in the context of the situation, that's the right card. The Unbed Elemental is the better card to play in general on turn 3, but if I play it, it's not dealing enough damage to kill the Voidwalker, so I could then use the Axe to finish it off, but if he plays another Chump Dixicle, then I uh, won't be able to kill it with the Axe. Here, if he plays a Chump Dixicle, I can like use the Panther to kill the Voidwalker and then punch him in the dick with the Stormforged Axe. Call Master. Case in point. So, it's a bit unfortunate he's going to get to draw a card off this Voidwalker, but I don't actually mind him drawing cards because I bet his cards suck. Kill it, give him his card, kill off the Cult Master. And, uh, we can play a Cobalt Geomancer or a Totem. I think I'm going to do this, and the reason for that is basically my main fear right now is Hellfire. And this and the Totem would both die to Hellfire, so even though it doesn't use up all my mana, I'm going to play this because it survives Hellfire. And Hellfire would be his whole turn, so it'd be kind of awkward for him to leave it alone. Bane of Doom, well, whatever it is, I can hex it. I don't really care. Alright, yeah, it's getting hexed. I think leaving it around is not a good move. Yeah. Hex it, hex, hex. We'll play a food hoarder. Froggy. So his Bane of Doom essentially ate my creature and a hex. So he's got pretty good card advantage here. He's got 7 to my 6. Soon to be 7? Nah, not really. And my life's pretty high, so I'm feeling good. Kind of wish this were a Lightning Bolt, because then I could place Azure Drake. Is Lightning Bolt better than Rock Butter Weapon? Maybe I should just change my mind about that. <laughs> There's, every single time this game, I've actually wished this were a Lightning Bolt, because I could play this, and then this would deal 4 damage, which might matter, depending on what he plays. Give me a quest. Okay, mm so let's see what he's going to do to the, help that live. Raid Leader? All right. Hmm. Well, this seems pretty straightforward. Actually, I think I can play the Azure Drake, draw a card. Use Ludwig to kill the uh, Raid Leader. To bump this down to a 3 3. Rockwater weapon. You know, if this were Lightning Bolt, I could use Lightning Bolt to kill that. This would be a 3 5. I could just kill the Questing Adventure. God! <laughs> Alright, I think we're going to do this first. Pretty sure I'm going to be doing that this turn. Cobra, okay, we'll do that. And Fork Lightning. Oh no! If only I had drawn that first, I could have used Fork Lightning. Well, we'll use Rockbiter Weapon. It's getting a little bit dicey. 17 health versus a Warlock. Warlocks, a lot of their burn though is like Hellfire and Soul Fire, which is just sort of awkward to use. Drain Life doesn't do that much damage. The so Warlocks, I would say, aren't that great at burning out. Not nearly as good as Mages, and not as good as Rogues. So if he plays more Chump Trash, I can Fork Lightning it with Mega Effect. Shadow Bolt is what he really needs here to kill the Azure Drake. He doesn't really want the Azure Drake to live. I actually have a lot of crappy cards too, but since I'm up against a Warlock, I'm not that bothered by it. I bet his cards are junk. If he does play good cards, then so be it. I don't really have any answers to good cards right now. Frost on the glass? a damn good card. Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, Fire Elemental. Yep, we're going to do this. Four things get out of control. Okay. So things are pretty much the same as they were, except now I upgraded my Unbound Elemental to a 6-5, and he played one of his, I'm sure, few good cards in the deck. Let's see if he can continue on. Wow. Jesus Christ, this guy's good cards. <sighs> of course I get the one Warlock who actually has good cards in his deck. Uh, of course. Now. Well, the issue is I don't have spell damage anymore, so this fork lightning might not be good. Well, see if we can get lucky. We didn't. This fork lightning, is there any point to playing for? There's just no point to playing for. Oh my god, I have a kobold geomancer! Jesus! <laughs> Almost missed that. 
Uh, let's play a Flesh Eating Ghoul so that it gets nice and chompy. Oh my god. Well, I drafted that Kobold Geomancer. Let's give myself some credit. But I almost had to take all the credit away because it was sitting in my hand and I forgot about it. This makes me wonder how many, like, sleep-addled mistakes I've made throughout this run. I, who knows? Who knows how many people are raging as, as, I, as I speak. Okay. Well, if he doesn't deal, do, deal, deal with the situation, this is going to hit him pretty hard. It's 10... 12, 13 damage is kind of a lot. If he plays a lot of little stuff, I can lightning storm the hell out of him. If he plays anything big, I might be in a bit of trouble. Because I never did get my Emperor Cobra onto the board. What you got, bud? What you got? So many possibilities. <sighs> mm. It is definitely nap time to do his flesh eating ghouls, and he's gonna kill this with whatever he was pointing at. I've got a huge Stomp that command on. Alright. Flesh eating ghoul gets big, so does his. Unlike his flesh eating ghoul, though, mine isn't about to get killed by a lightning storm. Oh no, the kobold died! Well, let's flip for a totem, see if we get spell damage. Nope. Let's see, let's flip a coin, see if we get, get the lucky coin flip. Nope! Well, let's trade the searing totem in. That, at least that works. And we're gonna swing for a monstrous amount of damage. Yeah, we'll play this. He can't really play Hellfire. It takes him down to one health, and the Fire Elemental survives. I mean, he could finish off the Fire Elemental, but that is a. Uh... I mean, I guess if that's always if that's only only out, he's got to do it. But he's not. It's not putting him in good shape. And that's his only. That's the Warlock's only mass removal, other than Twisting Nether, I suppose, the Epic. So he's probably gonna lose here. Actually, gonna life tap. It's a sign of desperation. So Hellfire now loses in the game, and that's not gonna do it. That is not gonna do it either. You can only kill one creature with that. This guy actually had a lot of good cards in his deck, so he lost. <laughs> that's the way to beat Papa Boris: is you play with bad cards in mass, and then you you get lucky and kill him. All right, are we up to six wins again? That would be so heartbreaking to lose at six wins for like the third time in a row. But, whatever, man. We're gonna try. The only games we've lost were aggro. Like, hyper, hyper fucking stupid aggro. So, as long as we get like a nice, fair, non mage deck, I think we have a better than average chance of pulling it out. Better than average. That's a phrase I can't seem to say normally. Better than average. Kind of like Moonfire. Alright, what do we have? Mage! Of course we have a mage! Of course we have a mage! Oh, motherfucking course. Nine classes in this game and I get freaking mage. Horror scope. Okay, we're gonna mulligan ultra aggressively. We're gonna send all those back. Keep the flame tongue totem. I should have mulliganed this. What am I doing? This is not a good card to keep against aggro. It doesn't work at all. I should have mulliganed that. Well, Fork Lightning was a good draw. So we'll see what kind of bullshit this mage is gonna do to me. Of course, mages can just beat you in the end game with their flame strikes and whatnot. It's just, it's just, there's just no beating them. There's just no beating them. Oh, come on! Can I get one break, please? Just one break? How about like not 25% chance of getting Searing Totem? Uh, no, 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 of course not. Oh, arcade missiles. Yeah. You friggin' do that. Oh, what are you? What? 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 What is this? <sighs> I would say she's throwing cards away, but apparently that's just what you freaking do these days. Is you just <laughs> arcane missiles to the face. So my opponent's gone card down against me here. Shields up. Um, my Panther's goal was to trade with the Sorcerer's Apprentice. So I don't know what. The, I guess it's, she's just playing this as a generic two-three. Uh, okay, Earthshock is pointless, unless, of course, I flip spell damage. Here's the problem. Flipping spell damage precludes me from being able to play Chillwind Yeti or Light, Light Un Unbund Elemental. If I play this and then Fork Lightning, does that make any sense? I can then kill off both creatures, be overloaded. That, let's just play... No, I don't want to play this, because I'm going to kill this thing. So the thing that's left is with three health, so that's kind of pointless. So yeah, we'll just play the biggest thing we have. He's a ball of our mana. Kill that. Totally fine. Trying to hang on in there. That's all we're trying to do. 
Just hang on in there. Pass me that arc light scanner. You might wonder, where are we trying to hang on in? And the answer is there. Well, she spent her whole turn drawing a card, which I'm pretty happy about. So a 2-3 and a 2-4. I'll kill the one that has the more hit points, of course. And Panda is pointless at the moment, so we'll make a totem. And play... Oh my god. The Earthshock sadly will not kill that thing. But this is stopping... If she kills the spell damage, she's not hitting me, and that's good, because I'm already at 20. So any bit of life that I can protect would be nice. Uh-oh, that stab bodes badly. Arcane Explosion... Eh, still okay. Still alright. What do we got? More arcane missiles? Coin. Oh, she still has the coin. Oh, man. I always forget about mages with the coin. Hmm. Well, the good news is that it seems like her plan has made her very vulnerable to fork lightning. Now, I could fire elemental, but I think I'd rather do... Well, wait a minute. What do I want to do? I could fire elemental, kill that thing, and then trade my creature in for the Geomancer, leave myself with 165. I could also just play this, and this, and then I leave myself with two creatures. I like that plan better. Even though it means I'm not playing fire elemental for a little while. I drew a card, buffed my dude, and I kept two creatures on the board. Which, because we're one turn away from flame strike, I think is worth doing. These will both die to flame strike. These will both live. I can't play Fire Elemental though, but I could play this. Just depends on what she plays. We'll see. Gah. Well, that one creature basically got to kill both of mine. Because I can't Fire Elemental at the moment. Ah, it's so sad. Earthshock doesn't do it. The panda makes no sense. Flame Tongue is pointless. Alright, we're going to do this do that. I could try shenanigans, but we're not gonna. I'm just gonna try. Yeah, so the Fort Lightning stopping the Fire Elemental was, of course, very sad there. I have card advantage pretty massively, and my life total is high enough that I don't really need to worry about being burned out. So I think we're okay here. I can play Fire Elemental. It survives Flame Strike for a time. So we're getting up to nine mana where she'll be able to finish off with her hero ability, but for a, for a moment, it will survive Flame Strikes. And as long as I keep on being able to kill her stuff efficiently, um, I'm going to do fine. Alright, so she plays the Reckless Rocketeer. Very lucky I do catch a break with that totem flip, I have to confess, because now I can play the Fire Elemental, kill this thing. Flesh Shooting Ghoul grows even more. Do I play Flame Tongue Totem? It seems a bit greedy to do so. I could just make a regular totem. Do I think she's going to play the Flame Strike? I don't think she is. I don't think she's going to do it. You know why? Because it will leave the Fire Elemental alive. So I am going to do this. All the Flame Strike would do is just kill two of my creatures. I think what she'd rather do is just target removal of the Flesh Eating Ghoul. Although this is also quite big. Oh my god, did she just top deck the Flame Strike? She made a mirror image. Oh, that's also really good, actually. Luckily, I have an answer for that. I have Kodo to destroy one and Earthshock to silence the other. So she's not as safe as she thinks she is. Hmm, if she actually doesn't, if she doesn't remove anything of mine, uh, she's actually in real big trouble here. That might be the game. Hmm, she didn't. Okay, I have to look very carefully to see if I can win. So 8 plus 8 is 16. Uh, so it's unlikely I'll be able to, see, I can do, uh, to, to, to beat her this turn. Let's play this. Kills one of them. Earth shock silence the other. I have three mana left. One of them will be up. This will be nine plus eight is seventeen. Mm. Seventeen damage. What I really want to do then is mm. pop this back into my hand with Panda, but I can't because that would be a total of ten mana and I only have nine. Ah. <sighs> well, what if I Kodo attack? Swing for 10, get her down to 9, and then Panda my Fire Elemental? Uh, no, I think that's silly. Alright, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. Sad that I, um, wait, wait. I need to play Flesh and Ghoul, then do that, then silence this, then swing. Damage. So, 
Flame Strike will clear me out. She could use the hero ability to finish off this. She could use this to finish off that. But then I have a lot of... Oh, she doesn't have Flame Strike. Oh, gosh. She doesn't have it. But then I have a lot of turns to draw Rockbiter Weapon or one of my other ways of winning the game. Anyway. Uh, yeah, she didn't have the Flame Strike. That is quite fortunate. It's awkward that the Flame Tongue Totem kind of ended up not touching my Kodo. Actually, let's not dick around here. Let's just win the game, shall we? We're going to pop this back into my hand. Yeah, let's, 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 let's just win the game. Deal damage. Oh, actually, pop it. That's so funny. Popping it back into my hand made the Kodo slide over, so it would have it would have dealt the damage too. It's interesting. I wonder if I would have noticed that. Like if that hadn't, if like the fire elemental had, had not been there, if that had not been fire elemental, would I have noticed that cool trick of pandoing up a creature into your hand to make your existing creature slide closer to Flame Tongue Totem so that you have lethal damage? Hmm. You know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I would have seen that. I just happened to notice it. After it happened, my intention with picking up the Flame Tongue Totem, or the Fire Elemental, was just to uh, deal with 3 damage and win. But that was kind of nifty. Oh my god, I made it to 7 wins. Huh. Freaking finally, man. I was about to lose faith in myself. Mage, whatever. Fat Manuel, you can go suck a dog. I don't even give a shit. Alright, we're going to keep the Ghoul because it's a 3 drop. Pass the exit to four drop. Keep the hex because removal. Normally, I don't keep hex in my opening hands because it's better late game. But again, I'm just trying to guard against this aggressive stuff. Ah, uh, Sengen comes back into my hand. I do have a couple of them. It might be his twin brother. Hello. Hello. There should be an emote for suck a dog. Greetings, friend. Coin and. Someday I'll be just like you. Hmm. <sighs> God, it feels so good to make it to seven wins. I don't even care what happens. I really don't even care. We're just going to play this game. We're not even going to care. That mage screwed up, though. She had the Sorcerer's Apprentice. She played a free Arcane Missiles. And then she... Pl to kill off my creature, which was totally legit. But then she played another free Arcane Missiles just to deal d damage to me. Why do I always get Searing Totem against mages? Why? Ah... <sighs> And I think maybe the mage was thinking, well, this is free, it costs zero mana. But remember, folks, even a spell that costs zero mana isn't free. It is costing you a card. So, don't get carried away with stuff like that. All right, my opponent basically passed the turn, which I'm not going to complain about. We'll play the Senjin here. She can have four drops, not like a Chillwind Yeti or a Senjin of her own, but I got the Dark Iron Dwarf. Fireball. Okay. You do that. <sighs> you do that. I want you to do that. Hey, look, it's a not searing totem. I don't even freaking believe it. Here it is. Very, very good spell. I'm a believer. Couldn't leave her if I tried. We must do, 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 do. Okay, uh, is it worth it to play Lightning Storm here? I'm really only killing two of my opponent's cards. Yeah, I think so. Because of the spell damage totem. So it's guaranteed to kill everything. The Splash Shooting Bull Girl is outrageously big. And uh, we're the aggressor now. And, of course, the Frostbolt will take it out, but she still needs removal for this thing. It's above Flame Strike. She's just got all kinds of problems. Next turn at 7 mana, minus 2 from the Overload, I'll have 5, so no Wind Fury Harpy for me, but I can play Dark Iron Dwarf. She pointed something and took it away. I wonder why she would do that. Was it because it's an expensive spell and she's not worth it? She's not sure if it's worth it? Is it because she wants to Flame Strike? Yeah, it's an expensive spell. She wasn't sure if it was worth it. It was probably worth it, I think. This is interesting. So she's hitting my totem. What this actually tells me, folks, and I might be crazy, and this might be like the best mind game of all time, but what it actually tells me is she doesn't have Flame Strike. Because if she did, she would have pinged this so that it would die next turn to the Flame Strike. What I'm going to do here is actually put this totem back into my hand, and I'm not actually going to replay it. I uh, It only costs one mana, so I'll just hold on to it. 
And, um, you know, when I need to cast a spell, such as not Lightning Bolt, because I took Rock Biter Weapon instead for some reason, I will just play it down and then the spell. It's something you don't get to do super often with Shaman, but it's really fun when you do get to do it. So now next turn I can play the Wind Fairy Harpy, who actually, by a hair, survives Flame Strike, what which is to nice. Do. What to do. Hmm. She's again not hitting my thing, so again she seems not to have Flame Strike. Uh, Sea Giant, huh? Hmm. I think... I'm just gonna hex this thing. Nope, 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 nope. We'll do we'll do this. We're gonna make this thing, and we'll buff this so it'll trade. That seems that seems sensible. Then we'll do this, and again, I I really just I think I got a sick read on my opponent. I think she just doesn't have the flame strike. So I'll trade that just in case. She has removal for it, like a frostbolt or something. Although she doesn't have Frostbolt, she used a Fireball to kill a Flesh Eating Ghoul, so she, she doesn't have a Frostbolt. She just top decked the Blizzard, okay. Enough. <laughs> and she has that. Hmm. Well, let's play Loot Hoarder. Can I make a Totem? It would drop the cost of this down to 5. I can make a Totem. Yep, I can do the Totem. Well, this survives Flame Strike for sure. So we'll see if she has any polymorphs. Upper sleeve. Ah, uh, top decking Blizzard. Well, it was in her deck, so, you know. Can't hold it against her for having it, but that was unfortunate nevertheless. I wonder. I love these sparkles, so you can tell that something is being buffed. Alright, get explosion, reasonable move. Polymorphing my giant, also a pretty reasonable move. Whoa, she messed up! She messed up! She should have polymorphed first, then arcane explosion. Wow, well, that's a mistake you wouldn't expect to see at the 7 win mark, but it is kind of at an odd time of the day. Alright, we're gonna do this, and make a totem. Swing with the sheep. I don't want to put the axe out. If it gets oozed, it gets oozed. Probably should have attacked with it, I guess. But I'm not going to play around this stupid ooze. I'm just going to get a Wind Fury Harpy here, which might need to get hexed. Yeah, it's going to need to get hexed. For sure. Okay, so um, we're going to hex the shit out of this thing. Oh, beep. Do I use the sheep? Let's use the sheep to kill it, I suppose. Oh, well, I could have... Yeah, this is right. So I'm going to use the fire elemental then. So this way, I could have I could have killed the sheep to kill the dwarf and save four damage. However, I don't care about taking four damage. I have so much health. It doesn't really matter. So I cut out everything my opponent had. I'm threatening the win now. Eight, 14, 15, 16 damage. She needs a flame strike, but it's not going to be enough actually, because she'll she'll be able to ping off the harpy, but then this will still live. Had I attacked her the turn I played the axe, then I'd have the kill. Ah, quote unquote. Maybe if I were like an elite player, I would have actually thought about that and put my things on the opposite sides to stop this very thing from happening. That's really irritating. Uh... Um. Okay, we're gonna attack with the sheep. I'm not, I don't want to throw the sheep away because I don't think it's exactly on borrowed time. I think there's other targets to hit. Well, now that the healing totem came out, I guess the sheep is on borrowed time. And it was going to die. Yeah, had I put these on opposite sides, the Cone of Cold couldn't have hit them both. So then she would have, like, Cone of Cold, the Wind Fury Harpy would have still would have swung for six damage. That actually would have made a huge difference. Note to self, against mages, when you have lots of creatures, to the point where Cone of Cold isn't just a mini blizzard, where it actually only really does hit just a subset of your stuff, then you want to put things far away from each other, at least your, your harder heading stuff. Anyway, it didn't matter there, I killed Fat Manul. So am I actually going to get another 9-win arena with a mediocre shaman deck? Well, we'll see. 
I'm, I'm happy to take eight wins. It definitely keeps the shaman pride going. What was I at? I was at three, three, three or sorry, three and two. Was I at three and two, or did it, was, was it four and two where I went had my second loss? Hmm, can't remember. I think it was three and two, but not sure. Yeah, because I wanted a huge big tangent about how the time snip of the video doesn't give anything away. Anyway, oh man, I'm gonna go to bed. It's gonna be so great. It's gonna be so great. Warrior, Zaz122. I'm just so happy to play something different. Four drops. Okay. Well, in another life, I would have kept some of these. In my new Papa Boris style of playing, those are all going away because they're not removal and they're not cheap. So in case of aggro, there we go. We got some aggro. We got lightning storm. We got hex. We got this shit cake. All right. That's awesome. I want to break the kite. Mulligan your cards. That should be an emote. I want to break your kite. Mulligan your cards. Okay, let's play this out. Against warriors, I'll totally waste that battle cry. Abusive Sergeant's battle cry is a bit scarier to waste. That's the 2 1 for 1 that uh, gives a minion plus 2 attack for the turn. A bit scarier to waste that one. Yo, that, 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 that went poorly. Ah, loot hoarder, just in time. Well, my opponent got card advantage because he played a creature. And then killed my creature. But I could get card advantage. If this lives, I can kill this creature and draw a card. We'll see. Come on, Daddy Long Legs. Daddy Long Legs. Why are your legs so long? In the case the whole YouTube Hearthstone thing doesn't work out, I'll just uh, take a break here and singing. Well, the taunt is obviously totally relevant. Uh, why I think this card sucks, volume 758 million. Hey. Go ahead and trade, because you should always draw cards first. Winfrey Harvey. Well, I would have coined out a 4-drop if I'd drawn one. I didn't. Let's go ahead and play this Cobra. It will kill the Sun Fury Protector, even if the Sun Fury Protector is buffed. Cobra will still kill it. So, do we have a Fiery War Axe coming in? We have a Slam. Hmm. Well, I imagine he has a follow-up for that, or else... What are you doing? Oh, Jesus. What? What? Oh, Jesus. Well, the slam drew a card, so it's kind of like he paid two mana to get a card, is pretty much what just happened there. I, I, I don't think that's a good move. Alright, we're going to go ahead and uh, make a, make this guy. Uh, if I played the Unbent Elemental, there was nothing left over to do with the mana. And I might as well save the coin. I made it this far without needing it. Might as well play the Wind Free Harpy next turn. For uh, Ready, sir. the coin. Hmm. Now, do I want to use the Flame Tongue Totem to kill off this thing? I could, like... Attack into that. Put the panda. Put it back in my hand. Have the panda then trade against that thing. Yeah, you know what? Whatever. We'll just we'll just make. Oh, yes, it's fine. So we'll kill this squire. So theoretically, this pirate is holding the fort against the silver hand knight. In theory. And um, this is gonna start hitting for eight damage. Well, actually, twelve damage if I can put a flame tongue totem next to it. And my opponent doesn't taunt. 12 damage is a lot of damage. We're gonna, well, he'll actually going only gonna have a 20 health because he's at max plus armor. That's kind of humbling that he can weather it so well. Oh no, he's pointing stuff at it. Boo! Don't point shit at my harpy. She's so precious. So the Execute goes in my 3-1, which is fine. I guess he has other plans for the Harpy, like a Shattered Sun Cleric, perhaps? Uh, Shattered Sun Cleric would be great. A 5-5 would kill a 4-5. That's like the Harpy being at his weakest. No! He's just gonna pass the turn. Wow! Alright. Well, what I'm gonna do is... Think very carefully for just a second. So yeah, we're gonna do this. And we're gonna just swing for 12. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hex this thing. Go all the way aggressive, I think. So the plan is, he plays a bunch of stuff, and then I do one of a couple of things. Either I just Stormforge Dax, kill the frog, and then swing for another 12. Or I actually Lightning Storm, kill all his stuff, and then still swing for, you know, 12. Probably playing the Unbound Elemental first, you know, to get beefed up. Brawl! Oh no! Oh my god, if that frog wins. Well... Mm, yep. 
I I guess I got the best outcome. I mean, if I if it had been a flame tongue totem that survived, I think I would have been still very happy with that. But the fact that the Wind Fury Harpy survived certainly is an unfortunate turn for my opponent. Why I don't like Brawl very much. Volume 566. Although if that frog had lived, I mean, it would have been a very different game. I still could have won this game, funnily enough. It's just that keeping the Wind Fury Harpy makes it a lot easier. Even keeping the Flame Tom makes it a whole lot easier. Because he wasn't going to lay a hand on it. He played the Leper Gnome, and then I killed it. Your magic ah, he could have silenced see. it. Okay, so yeah, I guess he could have taken care of the Flame Tom. Korokon Elite, not good enough to kill the Wind Fury Harpy. Sadly for my opponent. Eight. Oh my gosh, Wind... Alright, folks. Yes! Yes! Finally, my choice of Rock Biter weapon over Lightning Bolt is vindicated because when you give it to a Wind Fury creature, it is extra good. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, we go up to nine wins from like three and two up to nine. So, luck definitely pl plays a role in Hearthstone. Maybe this is why I do better. When my, uh, so many of my runs that go well go all the way up to nine. It's because like. Up at the top, you're playing against good people who aren't playing against bullshit, bad card aggro decks. And so, uh, when I don't have those to face, I'm not going to lose to stupidity. Haha! -ha. So, thank you so much for watching. I don't even know if anyone watched this. Whatever, if you watched it, thank you. I, I, this has been a, a real crazy video, I, I know. Um, yeah, please hit like and or subscribe for some reason. If you want to stick around for Upper Horse's Happy Fun Time bonus hour, because for some reason you haven't had enough... Go ahead and uh, do this. We have 70, 80, 200 gold, and two packs. Can someone tell me, is it always two packs? I just don't remember in recent memory, and there have been a lot of 9 million arenas in recent memory where it wasn't two packs. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with that. It's totally fine. I'm just kind of curious. I thought I thought it was I just thought it was a random thing, and you might get two packs, or you might not. You know, legendary! Holy shit! Oh my god, we got a legendary! Oh, this is the most epic day ever. I fail all over the place, and of course, you know, any pack could could, could give you a legendary from a sucky arena. But from finally after like eight times of trying, the pack I get has a legendary in it. Oh my god, that's so awesome! And an epic too, Bane of Doom. I think I already have those. Yeah, we already have all the Banes of Dooms we need. So from those packs, I got a new common, and that's... Wait. Hang on, aren't there only four commons per pack? Why Why do I have nine new why, why do I have nine commons? I don't know, it's late. We're just going to disenchant all that stuff. Yeah, so let's take a look at our legendaries. I mean, why not, right? Why, why, not, why not spend some quality time popping boards? So the only class-specific legendary I have is the worst one in the game course, which is the shaman one, none of the other ones, and, you know, like, you know, the ones that are actually, like, you know, good, and, like, playable, and, like, you might ever put it into a deck, yeah, so none of those, and then I have a lot of the cheap ones, the only one I'm missing is Nat Pagel, which is, you know, well, it's bad right now, because it's only 25%, it's, it's broken, it's bugged, but once it's, once it is, um, fixed, it and the Blood Mage are really the only, like, two playable ones. In regular decks, so we're missing all of these. Here's our brand new Harrison Jones. I do have one of the best cards in the in the game, according to some people. I don't know. I haven't found it to be that great, but missing a lot of these, and really nothing here. None, none of the like really epic ones. So those those are Papa Boris's legendaries. Mostly the worst of the lot, but uh, but a few good ones in there. Um, let's take a sneak peek at our next arena, cause yeah, why not? Okay, it's gonna be pretty as rogue warlock. Well, I'm on vacation from warlock. I did just play both these recently, but fuck you warlock I'm on vacation from it. That is that I'm going to bed. See you next time